Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, we're going to talk about the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Tempest, the fourth volume in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen saga. But we're not going to talk about the collection that just came out. We're going to talk about the six individual issues that came out in 2019 because this is a very special series. Even uh, compared to the other League of Extraordinary Gentlemen series, which are all very special, this is an animal something of its own. Let's talk about why today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome to the show. Today, uh, The Tempest, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, The Tempest, the collected uh, hardcover just dropped, I believe, this week. And it's got this beautiful cover uh, by uh, the artist Kevin O'Neill. Um, but today we're going to look at the six individual issues of this series that came out in 2019. Now, I didn't do any reviews of these as they came out. And to tell you the truth, as each issue came out, I kind of read it cursorily and, uh, and put it down. It wasn't until very recently that uh, a, a, a fan of the show, Chris K., if you're watching asked if I would review this series and I thought hey why the heck not why haven't I reviewed it already so I took a fresh look at it I read all six issues and I'm ready to talk about it today this book is really very very different than any of the other League of Extraordinary Gentlemen books okay I'm a humongous fan of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen if you haven't read it and your only knowledge of uh, uh, of the League is from the God awful movie that was that was made with Sean Connery. Please, please, please put that aside and do yourself a favor and go pick up Volume One and Volume Two of League Extraordinary Gentlemen. Okay, you can get them in a collected volume both together, and really they tell one story. So I highly recommend reading Volume One and Two because they are just a fantastically well written story with characters uh, that you will probably be more familiar with than many of the characters that are explored in the later books, including the book that we're going to talk about today. Um, but let's talk about the characters, right, of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Uh, this is a universe, it's, it's sort of a, like a, a, a fictoverse. Of, uh, it began in uh, the Victorian fiction, covering, uh, bringing together the likes of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula and uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, the, the Invisible Man, uh, and, and, and so many others, the works of Edgar Allan Poe, and so many works of fiction of that era, and brought them together into sort of like a Victorian Justice League, right? That was sort of the initial um, pitch of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. But man, it is a very special book written so beautifully with moments of like just humor uh, action, drama, uh, touching emotion, and, and, and the full gamut of human emotions, and, and just a ripping good yarn at the same time. Lots of action, uh, lots of great moments, and lots of cool characters uh, that, that you will recognize, including, um, who I forgot to mention, of course, uh, Sherlock Holmes and sort of his um, uh, surrounding cast that uh, we'll talk about. Spoiler alert, we're going to spoil some stuff from the series probably in this review. So be careful um, because there are some surprises in that first two volume that are in that first volume, especially that are really, really worth it. So um, if you haven't read that, maybe you go read it and come back and read this. But um, I'm going to mostly talk about the new series. And, and wait a second. Why am I talking about it when we could be looking at it in the Million Dollar Comics game? Oh, and hey, what's this? Oh, could this be an original sketch drawing by uh, League of Extraordinary Artist Kevin O'Neill? Why, yes, it is. As a matter of fact, when uh, uh, many years ago, uh, when I owned my comic book store, I hosted a signing for uh, Mr. O'Neill. I believe it was for League of Extraordinary Gentlemen Black Dossier. Um, and he came to the store. I had a small store. I didn't hold a lot of huge events, but this was had to be one of my all-time favorites and Kevin O'Neill is such a gentleman sat there and, and and talked to all of my the fans and customers that showed up and did sketches and drawings and everything including this was his name tag that he drew for himself that he kept with Mr. Hyde on it 
Actually, I loved and I kept. And and before he left, he asked um, which character from League of Extraordinary Gentlemen I would like him to draw. And I picked Sherlock Holmes. Not one of the main characters, not one of the more recognizable ones, but one of my favorite characters and uh, one that was written so uh, so well in the series and drawn um, just in such an awesome style by Kevin O'Neill. Now let's talk about Kevin O'Neill's style, right? Well, I know Kevin O'Neill from Martial Law. You may have heard of Martial Law. If you haven't, you need to find it and read it. I'm going to review it soon on the show. I have the deluxe compilation of all the issues, and it is one of the greatest superhero parodies of all time with amazing art by uh kevin o'neill and so his work in that book you know it's crazy it's nutty it's all over the place and um it, it wasn't one that when i heard he was gonna be drawing league of extraordinary gentlemen i it wasn't a style that i thought was necessarily particularly suited to it but oh man he is such a student of art not just comics art, but classic artwork and illustration from the 18th century all the way up into the current day. Just talking to him was amazing. The guy is so tuned in to art, pop art and classic art and literature. It was really inspiring to talk to him. And anyway, each what's amazing about this book is each issue is done in a different style. Yeah, that's right. Each one is made to sort of... Um, parody or more like a love letter to a bunch of different classic comic styles that uh, Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill grew up reading. So this series is kind of a love letter to British comics, but the British comics of the 60s that they grew up on, a lot of it was American reprints, so there's a lot of stuff you'll recognize, and a lot of it was just, if it wasn't a reprint of American comics, it was just a swipe and kind of a ripoff and stuff that looked and sound, seemed a lot like it. And if you've read a lot of Alan Moore comics, you know he loves that stuff. He loves to take these really obscure um, knockoff characters and golden age characters. Like, I mean, Miracle Man is just, the, of course, the most obvious instance of that where Marvel Man was a knockoff of Shazam, which was a knockoff of Superman and blah, et cetera, et cetera. And he turned it and transcended it, right? So we're going to see the six different issues. I'm going to look at the covers real quick. First one done in sort of a classics illustrated style. Um, each issue has... Uh, a different parody cover and then on the back a sort of like um uh character galaxy pin up a uh, pin up of one of the characters from the backup story in this book each issue s follows this format right they start with a a feature they call cheated champions of your childhood and it's basically alan moore you know channeling stanley and uh and talking just about how this is this book is a love letter to um to the comics of his and and Kevin O'Neill's youth, and they're Al and Kev, right? These are the guys that that brought you this book. And in each one, they talk about a legendary like figure in British comics, which may or may not interest you, but they're written so so in such a a, a, a madcap style and 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 just in a funny way. I just read Madcap right off of here. Madcap Master of Ceremonies, Al and Kev here, pretending to be. Two frankly baffled editorial employees working for British juvenile weeklies in the 1960s, who are themselves pretending to be unlikely English versions of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby for reasons they don't entirely understand. With the whole conceit thus being only comprehensible to elderly indigenous men who can't get over their childhood, and if that's not a proper mouthful, then we don't know what Bloomin' well is. Basically, this is the last hurrah of Alan Moore in comics, supposedly, and it's definitely the last volume of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and they are just going to be self-indulgent and do a love letter to the types of comics that they grew up reading and send off the League in that way. This is the fourth volume. The previous volumes, I said, one was in the Victorian era. The, they've, they've moved up all the way. The last volume was the 20th century, uh, which ended with a spoiler alert, Antichrist Harry Potter uh, destroying... The universe um and uh now they've uh they've returned and the characters have come back and um uh, from the previous volumes i'm definitely not going to be going page by page over everything in this book and every volume but i'll i'll, I'll, I'll recap some of sort of the ideas and i especially want to showcase when they slip into these different parody styles like here for instance um you know we're doing the character uh m the new m who, spoiler alert, is Moriarty from Sherlock Holmes. 
And he's got these J agents that are all the different James Bonds of the different eras. And he's even got them even right down to like the Woody Allen uh, uh, version from that, uh, that, that parody movie that he did. So it's, it's, it's funny stuff that parodies James Bond, but at the same time puts a hard edge on it because Moriarty is just a bastard and, and the agents are bastards. And it's pretty clear that, that, that Moore views them that way. But it's drawn in this newspaper strip style, like the James Bond newspaper strip was, I guess. And uh, or I've seen reprints of it, and does it is like this, and it's a daily strip, but it still reads like the comic. That's what's amazing. They they keep the story moving forward, even when it slips into drastically different styles like this. And 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 th throughout the series, you'll you'll see quickly see how many different styles that we're talking about. And then it goes back into the more standard um, a Kevin O'Neill, L-O-E-G type um, scenario as well. But then slips back and forth, right, into these different styles. And each issue is done in a different style, as I said. This stuff is funny, uh, fun to read. The dialogue is great, but it's chilling too at the same time because Moriarty is just a bastard and wants to just destroy everything that the League is, is out to protect. And now each issue has a beginning story with the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and then there's a, a backup story that's a six parts of a story of these characters, the Seven Stars, which are sort of characters in this universe in, in previous books of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Mina joined this sort of 60s British superhero group, the Seven Stars, and uh, uh, she she actually like took the place of one of Vol the Invisible, and she's just been invisible. Nobody actually knew she was that until later on. Again, spoiler alert. Um, but it's done totally in black and white, like an old British comic. Meanwhile, throughout the book, throughout all the books, we get these sort of, just like the old League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, we get tons and tons of gags and, and like fake advertisements just full of hilarious jokes and copy. Like if you like parody stuff, Mad Magazine style, you're gonna love this stuff. So anyway, the the seven, um, the, uh, the the backup story is a fun superhero read that sort of ties back into the other story, but it is kind of a standalone tale like uh, unto itself. Now we move into the second book. This is the one that I am the least sure of what this style is supposed to be. This TV, I, I think it's more like a more modern type like TV guide type thing. He doesn't really go into it exactly what it is <clears throat> but uh hello how do you do it's the fears of fun alan kev here still trapped a pseudo-american cockneys right so again the closest thing i could put this story to it's not like league of extraordinary gentlemen it's more like the old 1963 series that alan moore did that was a parody of marvel comics of the 60s um in the sense that it parodies very specific comic tropes and 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 um and characters now, Kevin O'Neill's style, let's talk about it for a second, right? Because some people look at it and they don't get it. They're like, this looks, I don't know, crude? Well, you could say that. But I think it's not, I mean, it's definitely not crude. No, I don't think you could say that. It's it's quite sophisticated in its composition and layout. It's, you know, the, the, the rendering and anatomy itself is not meant to be um, photorealistic. He comes more from that cartoony school, but he can also slip into so many different styles like when we go into these various parody stories and or when we slip into the the flaming world the blazing world rather which we'll see starting in the next issue um we see amazing stuff when he has to do layouts and things like this that like almost like a handbook to marvel universe like nemo's secret headquarters and all the stuff in here it's just fun beautiful well composed um his action scenes are awesome his style is, you know, it's not for everybody, but man, is it for me. And they'll include all kinds of stuff, little paper dolls and little different uh, uh, cutouts or things that were reminiscent of whatever issue they're parodying. Again, we got the seven stars back up. We get a nice real letters column and then another um, uh, uh, pin up of one of the uh, characters from the backup story. Third one we do in the style of... Uh, what a, a British uh, girls comic 
right? For some reason, it's an, it's an extinct British girls picture weekly, right? So this is like a girls comic from the 60s um, and done in that style right down to, um, you know, it's very Mad Magazine reminiscent. And these stories are hilarious, super, super funny. Al Moore is, is, is on point and super sharp in this stuff in this in his parody work. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil any of it, but... You'll go into stuff like this. We get a little Fumetti photo comic like they would have had in this girl's comic back then. All these touches, these loving touches um, that show how much those old style of comics meant to them. And we can see them slipping into different styles. And even when I don't recognize the style, I I'm not an expert in British comics or British comics of the 60s and, and that kind of stuff. But you can still read it and appreciate it because it's so obvious Th those first of all those things have so many american references but it's so obvious that they love these guys and these characters and have done some really cool stuff to tie them together okay now this is the last page of this is when we we bring back the concept of the, the, the blazing world and this is where these 3d glasses come into play and let me tell you i don't like 3d comics that usually that much but these are amazing. These are some of the best 3D comics I can ever I've ever seen in my life. The 3D technology that they're using. I wish we could simulate it somehow in the Million Dollar Comics Jam, but I, it definitely can't do it justice. But these things are popping out in a way that I've never seen in a 3D comic. Certainly not in a full color 3D comic. Like I've seen through color process on um, like black and white 3D stuff, and it looks cool. It looks neat. You can see a few layers. These guys are going multiple layers in full color. Again, I can't do it justice on the MDCC, but um, it's worth it to pick it up. And and you know it it it's like previous volumes. It'll come with a pair of these glasses, a pair of Blazing World glasses. The fourth issue is done in the style of sort of humor comics uh, from the '60s, sort of I guess more like a like a Beano maybe. You know, humor comics for kids. And, and this is right down to, like, this stuff is drawn in this humorous, funny style. But this is the plot of the story. These are the characters from the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen book just being told in this different style. And they slip seamlessly back and forth through the styles. And we get to see references, stuff that was only mentioned in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen black dossier that we finally get to see at least a little glimpse of. Like, Le Homme's Mysterieux. If I'm pronouncing that right, which is sort of like a a, a a French league that has this sort of Elric type parody and guys like Fantomas and the Phantom of the Opera and, uh, you know, really fun, fun to see. Really, um, it, it's so obvious what a fan of superhero comics Alan Moore was of the, in the 60s. Like, it's just how much he loved this stuff and he poured over it and he collected and he searched out golden age and obscure stuff from britain and america and incorporated it into so many of his comics tom strong top 10 and of course league of extraordinary gentlemen now here we go going into different styles here's a little nemo in uh slumberland story like windsor mckay you can't see it you can't tell here but this stuff is all 3d and this is all like a 3d path that they're traveling down it's fantastic it's great to look at again it's going to be really dis disjointed for some people to slip back and forth into these styles and then to slip back and forth into 3d and 2d comics it's confusing 3d stuff while it's cool does kind of give me a headache but man it was worth it for this because these things are popping in a way like i say that i i can't really do any justice to and there's a ton of it starting in this issue we get to see all kinds of awesome stuff going on um Issue five is done in the style of like an American pre-code horror book. Um, so it's done like a like a uh, uh, like an EC comic, almost. There's bits of 3D in here as well, and the story goes more and more. I mean, this is stylistically impressive and and like diverse and with amazing special effects, 3D special effects like I've never seen in a comic before. 
this book surprised me as like a like a a, a tour de force by Kevin O'Neill. Like the Alan Moore writing is as good as on par with all the stuff, but this is Kevin O'Neill doing so many different styles that I'm I'm frankly I'm really impressed by a guy that um I already thought was an amazing artist. And you've got these great characters like the Captain Universe character who's sort of like a scientific Shazam. Uh really funny, fun soup. And these are all real golden age, obscure golden age characters that Moore has just brought back. Some of them only appeared once in one comic, but he's sort of create been true to that one appearance but brought them in and created their backstory. There's so many amazing concepts thrown in uh, to League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and it's just getting crazier and crazier as, you know, the last previous volumes was some of the, the Nemo stuff, which is the descendants of the original Captain Nemo, his daughter, and then now his grandson, who is the son of Nemo's daughter and, and French Robert, the air pirate. And he says, like, so that legacy of the sea and the air together were going into space. And this this uh, Nemo has built a spaceship, and uh, again the backup stories, well, funny, hilarious parodies of these of these crazy characters, very funny characters you've never heard of, but you, you'll read them and you'll totally you know them. And then the final issue, of course, 2010 AD, as we move into the future, we take the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen into the into outer space and into the far future. And spoiler alert. You know, weird stuff is going on in Earth, and not everything we knew and we thought we've known throughout all the books has sort of revealed that there's been a secret mastermind behind the whole thing trying to pull something off. The title of the comic is sort of related to that, but I'm not going to give away any more than that. I'm going to just go look flip through this last issue, done in the style of uh, 2000 AD, so you get these like little credit slugs. And, uh, you know, black and white, of course, just like 2000 AD, where Alan Moore himself wrote many comics. And I believe Kevin O'Neill did work for them as well. Um, and these are like sci-fi type comics that, but we finally get, you know, final ultimate um, payoff for, for some of the characters and, uh, and a fitting send off in the end as Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill themselves show up in the story. Uh, and we get a final, um, the final episode of the seven, um, the seven stars, and then finally a last page. Spoiler alert for sure, but like this is a payoff to the fans as they bring back through the through DNA and cloning technology are able to bring back characters we've seen before and give us sort of a fitting sort of little send off. And that, with love to our faithful readers, genuinely is the end. And, and, and that's it. That was the last Alan Moore comic. Or was it? I believe 100% that it was the last... Uh, it was the last League of Extraordinary Gentlemen comic. And I believe maybe Alan Moore has written enough. This, this just doing the work on this, you can tell from the... Um, text pieces in the beginning he's like man this is going to be this is like going to be trying your patience and we're just like almost sorry we embarked on it because there was so much research and work that had to be put in to deliver this that i'm sure it's got to take a major break from comics but you know the guy's a master storyteller and if he's got another story to tell he's going to tell it and we're all going to read it and it might be in comics because why not um i've tried reading his latest novel jerusalem i'm about quarter of the way through and I had to put it down for a while it's it's an it's an epic uh it's an epic novel and it's it, it's not it's very engaging and fun but it's it's really hard to figure out sort of where it's headed um anyway where this channel is headed is up and up you know I, I I've been my last few videos I've been getting sort of like uh, I haven't been able to put out as many videos. I've been slowing down a little bit. My views are slowing down a little bit, but I've got you guys, you hardcore fans who are watching and checking this out and commenting in the comments. Tell me what you think. I'm trying to do, I'm going to do less videos, but a little bit longer, hopefully, and go a little bit more in depth than what I'm talking about, like today's Tempest. Um, I'll be back hopefully Wednesday with a review of most of the comics that I buy for the week. And, uh, and then we'll take it from there. I want to, 
thank everybody who's watching and supporting this channel. If you haven't already, click subscribe and uh, hit that bell for notifications if you want to get uh, notified about new videos as they drop. Thank you for engaging and participating. And, and most of all, hey, thanks for watching.